Hey guys, welcome back to the second day of this uh, Christmas special week. So today we jump into ZBrush. We're going to be working with ZBrush and we're going to be following the same uh, process as we did yesterday. I just, I don't want to give you guys a gift just to give you the gift, which I love by the way, but I want to teach you about the gift. Like why is this little gift that I'm giving to you important and how can, how, what are the things that you can use that gift for? Okay, so uh, today I, I was wondering like, what, what can I give these guys for Seabrush? And I realized that one of the things that people struggle with the most are base meshes. So a lot of people use the demo soldier, the male uh, mesh, the demo head, the demo uh, head female, and, and those are good meshes. However, one thing that I don't like about using base meshes that are, mm, let's say it, quite complete, is that you forget to learn or you don't really learn about all of the important stuff about your characters, right? Uh, also, also, each artist, whenever they do a, a, a um, what's it called, a base mesh, they will add a little bit of their artistic influence to them. So you might find that certain base meshes are a little bit more realistic, some are a little bit more stylized, some, some are a little bit more cartoon. So it, it depends on, on, on the artist, right? Um, and it's gonna happen with this one that I'm gonna do for you guys. So I just wanna, I just wanna uh, keep, get get that uh, out there. So the way we're gonna start, and uh, this is gonna be kind of like a like a proportion tutorial. Uh, we're gonna do our own base mesh. We're gonna do not a planar head because I also think that the planar head is a little bit too like simplified. Uh, but I'm gonna give you the main forms. We're gonna be talking about like the main proportions and things that you need to look uh, out for whenever you're working on a on a male head. So the male proportions that we have or that we typically use are this ones, right? Like uh, I think it was Andrew Loomis who did this, um, this one right here. And, and it's kind of, it has been kind of like the canonical way to represent a male face. Is this the only one? Of course not. Of course not. Like there's so many other variations on a male face. This is a very European kind of like, uh, without going too political, it's a very like white face, right? And um, you guys know, and we know, because we're from all of sort of different cultures, that the proportions of the face are really different, right? You're not gonna have the same facial structure in an Asian uh, male than in a like South American male or like an Australian male. Like there's so many, many variations. So we use this as a rules of thumb as a, as a guide for our, our projections or pr uh, proportions, but that does not mean that that's supposed to be the one, okay? Or that that's the only one. So I'm gonna start with my move brush and I'm just gonna pull this thing out to create the neck, which is gonna be something like this. Then control and drag to um, create a little bit of an, um, to recalculate the dynamic, and then I'm gonna create this sort of like profile. Uh, a, a teacher of mine, one of the things that he, this is a, a, an issue that I get with my alt key. It kind of like gets stuck or something. There we go. I need to change my keyboard soon. I'm gonna turn off perspective. I don't usually like to use uh, perspective when, when I'm working on, on series because it, it kind of distorts certain things. So a teacher of mine, when, when I was taking uh, drawing classes, he mentioned that the head's kind of like a Dorito. So it's like this triangular looking shape. And I always thought it was like a like a motorcycle helmet. So so that's kind of like what I I like to to create on this side view. Now if we go to the front view. Of course, it looks completely weird, but that's fine because now on the front view, I'm gonna use my move brush. I'm gonna start creating a little bit of the volume. Now you're gonna have a little bit more of a roundish volume up here, up in the head, than what you're gonna have uh, down here on the on the on the jawline, right? It even looks like a cool alien right now, which is fine. You can also start your creatures like this. So I'm gonna use my clay build up here to start adding a little bit of volume on all of this area, which is where the cheeks are, where the jawline is, where the mouth is, and there we go. Now this is way too much, so I'm gonna use my trim dynamic and I'm gonna just trim this out so we get a, like a flatter effect. Now very important, this is a very common mistake that a lot of people make. When you're doing a face, face shouldn't be flat on the front. They have this sort of like um, acceleration. My sculptor teacher used to call it that. Uh, this it's this acceleration where, where you're gonna have like an angle going forward and it's really 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 important that we uh, take that into consideration uh here in mexico there was um a very ancient uh, civilization called the olmecas and uh, they created this gigantic heads that are like all over well not all over the place but in certain regions of mexico 
uh, the founders' faces. And I always tell, tell my students, you don't want to create an Olmeca face because they're very flat. Like if you see them from the side, you can see that all of the factions, like the nose, the mouth, and the eyes are all on the front and, and there's no depth on the face. So, so yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's a cool head, right? But uh, it, it's not what we want uh, for our particular character. So yeah. Now up here, you're going to have a little bit of a, of a bevel because there's a, there's a bone called the frontal bone. Let me draw it real quick. It has this sort of shape. And then at the side, right about here, we're going to have one called the temporal bone. Okay. Here we have the zygomatic arch, which is our like cheekbone right here. And if we divide the head right at the center of the head, that's where you're going to have the eyes. So I'm going to use my clay build up here and I'm going to start carving in the eyes. So that's, that's where our eyes are usually going to be located. Now, when you take a look at a head from the side view or from a side view, uh, a male head will usually have like a really forward facing, uh, like, a what's the word for this part of the body? Forgot about it. Forehead, forehead. So the forehead here is going to be really flat like this. And then you're going to push the nose in, in what I like to call the keystone. Okay. So you're going to have like this sort of like angle. So you go down and then the nose goes in like this. And then from there, you're going to have the nose pushing outwards, right? At an angle like this. Now we're not going to detail the nose or anything. We're going to keep it really, really simple. I actually like to go with my trim dynamic and kind of make it plainer. Male characters typically, typically have their nose at a 90 degree angle right here. So, so you're not going to see like, like this sort of like a uh, curved uh, nose uh, upwards, uh, you're, you're gonna have like a very straight nose. That's that's usually how we how we handle that one. There we go. Now here, uh, where the keystone uh, starts, which again is this sort of like hexagonal shape, the nose is gonna push outwards a little bit usually, and then flare out to the to the main shapes of the nose like this. Okay, so something something like that. Very common mistake. Whenever people are doing skulls, they make them angry. They make angry skulls, like uh, like Ghost Rider or Ghost Rider kind of kind of uh, skulls. And uh, if you take a look at a human skull, you actually have a an inclination where the eyes are going down. So it's kind of it's more like a happy skull rather than a than a than an angry skull. See, so you can see this one right here. I think this is a three D model. Uh, but it's, it's, it's based on a, on a realistic one. So, so be careful because you, you don't want to have like an angry skull. It, it looks, it looks too edgy and, and you don't want that, but we are going to have a little bit of a, of a line over here. Let's start smoothing and cleaning all of this stuff. Um, all of this stuff out. So BTD is the shortcut for trim dynamic. Now here on the side, you can see it here on the, on the skull. Here's a, a ridge, which is the ridge where the frontal bone and the and the temporal bone kind of like join together. You can see it right here. Very important to have that one. So I'm going to start adding this sort of like effect over there. Careful here. I've always mentioned this whenever we're, we're sculpting anything, right? Like you, you want to make sure that you are constantly checking everywhere, like on every single like a uh, angle, especially in 3D, because we tend to focus too much on one specific side and, and that's not what we want. Now here, I'm just going to add a little bit of a, of a cheekbone. It's kind of like a, like a ridge. And then this cheekbone goes, goes back like this. There we go. Perfect. Usually be beneath the cheekbone, we're going to have like a hollow effect. <laughs> not in my case. I have very, very puffy cheeks. Uh, in Mexico, we called, or they call people like me cacheton because we have a lot of uh, cheek. And, um, but yeah, so usually there's going to be a little bit of a, of, a, of a gap in there. Then that's the jawline. Perfect. Now the neck, neck is very important. People tend to mess the neck up quite a bit. As you can see here on this little head, which by the way, someone asked me where to have this one. I believe it's here preferences. And then is this one, I think it's thumbnail. No, that's the thumbnail cam view. Yeah, it's this one cam view. So you you can like change or, or modify where your camera is. And you can see that the neck is not going straight up. It's actually going forward. Okay, so there's a little bit of, a, of an incline going forward with the neck. And it's super, super important because that that's part of what we call the gesture of the character when we push the neck uh, forward. Now when we see it from the front, the neck is very straight. Okay, 
So we want to make sure that we have enough volume of the neck going down like here. A lot of people make the mistake of, of like joining the neck and the back muscles and they create like super weird blob where, where, the, where the head's coming down. Try to keep it as straight as possible. And then later on, you build the, the back muscles like back here uh, to create like the like the actual back. In this case, or in our case, we're not gonna be adding the, the back muscles. I'm gonna clean some of these areas later on. I just want the straight neck right here. There's a muscle called the sternocleidomastodius, I believe in, in English, um, which goes from the um, from the back of the of the jawline here towards the center of the of the neck to the to the clavicle. Very like famous muscle because it has two little like legs when it uh, joins over there. So I can just generally um, indicate where this thing is going to be. Now let's clean some of this things. I'm going to go with my knife brush. So the control shift and I'm going to grab this knife curve and I'm just going to like cut here and here. That way we don't have to worry about anything over here. There we go. That way we only focus on the, on the actual head, which I think this one's a little bit too high. So I'm going to use my move brush. There we go. It's a little bit better. It's a little bit closer to what we would expect. And usually when you're working for uh, certain types of games, like uh, shooters, where you're going to be changing the heads of your character, this is very common where you only do this part of the character because everything else is modular and you're going to have like a, like a different effect. I don't like this harsh line. So I'm just going to trim dynamic it to give it more like a, like a sculpture approach. Now at, at any point you can just like continue the body. Like that's, that's no problem at all. Uh, but there we go. Now, if we go to the side of the face, I'm going to use the mean standard here to, to mark the sideline of the face like this. You're going to see a very important uh, fact, and that's the th the that's the the fact that my ear is going to be like back here. Okay, a lot of people place the ears way too forward, and no, you want to have your ear like over here. So in this case, again, I'm just going to block in the ear. So I'm just going to add a little bit of volume here, so that my ear is roughly on the place where we want to be. We want this to be a base mesh. Again, I don't want to solve your your character for you guys. You're gonna you're gonna use this base mesh eventually to create your own elements. Now, here I can see that it's a little bit too deep, uh, like my face is a little bit too deep. So I'm gonna start like modifying some of the proportion, like see how how inclined like that a nose is right there. Let's modify a little bit. And that's always gonna depend on, on the kind of project and, and the and product that you're working on. Now, when we see the face from the front, we're gonna divide the face into three sections. The first section that starts at the hairline, which is about here, and that's right and finishes or ends up right here about um, where the where the top of the eyes is. The second section ends right where the nose ends, and then the third third section is where uh, the mouth is going to be. So this in this third section, in this last third of the face, you're going to divide that one into three parts as well. And on the first third, that's where the mouth is going to be. A very common mistake is people place the mouth way too low on your characters. And, and that leaves us with no jawline, and that makes it very difficult for a character to bite. And I mean characters or creatures. Like, they, they, they tend to place the mouth either, like, right here or even lower. Like, I've had some people place the mouth, like, really, really low. No. The mouth should be at the first third of the last third of the face, which is about here. Okay? Now, there's a couple of things about silhouette that we need to take into consideration. Usually, the upper lip puffs out a little bit like this. It creates like a little bit of a ramp. So we're going to have this thing right here. And then the lower lip has a little bit of a con or like a cavity beneath it. So you're going to have like the lower lip, like the beginning of the lower lip right about there. Oop. Lower lip goes inside the upper lip. So like this, see that? And usually the upper lip goes farther out than the lower lip. And then we have, of course, the um, our chin. Now, some people or some characters have like the chin divided here in the in the center. That's going to depend on, on how you want it. This lips are way, way too big. So let's make them a little bit softer. And what I like to do whenever I'm doing base meshes is unless I'm really, really sure on how the character is going to look, I'm going to keep it simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify the mouth. And instead of having the lips, I'm just going to create something called the barrel of the mouth, which is just the general volume that the mouth occupies. Okay, so 
So something like this. So I know when I see it from the front or from the side, we already have the proper volume right here. And it's just a matter of polishing it based on, on what the, or on the character that we're going to need. Now, we already, we've talked about this before when we've, did, uh, we've done some characters or creatures. There's a nasolabial fold, which is a fold that goes from the side of the nose all the way down here to the, to the mouth. So it's just, I'm just going to start adding a little bit of that effect. There we go. And just, just let's start smoothing because there's a, a lot of uh, like uh, marks and, and things, which it can work, right? Like even like a very rough base mesh, it, it, it can work, but we definitely want to clean this up. Now for the eyes, um, I, I hope that everyone that knows how to use ZBrush knows this process of how to add a, a an eye uh, sphere, like an eyeball uh, for the character. But if you are just starting with ZBrush and you're a little bit unfamiliar with the process, do not worry. We'll cover it right now. So we're just going to go subtool, append. We're going to append the sphere, select the sphere, move the sphere to where it's supposed to be. This is going to be like my uh, left eye. There we go. Something like that, I think works fine. Let's get it in there. And then we're going to go C plugin, uh, subtool master, mirror. And we're going to mirror this to the other side. There we go. So now it's just a matter of uh, adding like the upper eyelid here and the indication of a lower eyelid, like down here. I don't want to make him like sad. So let's sculpt the eyes a little bit better there. Damien is standard to, to cut in the element right here. We might need a little bit more subdivision. So we're going to go geometry, increase the dynamic subdivision so that we get, again, a little bit more more elements and there we go now i do think my face is a little bit too short like if i take a look at the at the proportions it kind of looks a little bit short and that's the kind of thing that you're going to have to to be like modifying and changing and and it goes back to what i mentioned earlier on on today's uh video each artist will have its own sort of like sensibility and style with its uh, base meshes and proportions so my base mesh will be a little bit more aim towards the kind of style that I like to do, which I always found it's kind of like a, like the old Blizzard style where it is realistic, but it's like an, an like, like a stylized realistic uh, kind of like approach. So uh, it will change, right? However, you can adapt any sort of uh, base mesh to, to fit what you want. I'm going to use my um, move brush here to, to move the, the eyes. Some people, another thing they like to do is once they have the spheres, they actually close the eyes as if the character was uh, like sleeping or something. There, I've seen some riggers that prefer this method nowadays with the eyes closed because it's easier to to rig the like this proportions over there. Uh, but you're gonna have to ask your uh, your production or your client what specific thing they they need. So I'm gonna increase the a little bit of the cheekbone over here. There we go. I think I'm going to keep the, the eyes closed. Now let's go back here. The ears look a little bit weird, so I'm going to just sharpen them up a little bit. Trim dynamic again. I feel like we're missing a little bit of volume over here. See how it's kind of like weird. So we're going to add a little bit of that volume here on the, on the back of the head. And again, trim dynamic to just smooth this out. This process, by the way, like I, I'm going to be giving you this uh, this base mesh, guys, so, so that you can use it. I'm going to keep it as flat. I'm going to start doing a little bit of like planar work. Um, but you can use this process to, to create any sort of character. Like this is my process. This is what I normally do whenever, whenever I'm starting like a new character from scratch. Uh, I would do like a very basic base mesh. And if you've gotten any of our courses, like the demon course or like the soldier course, the first like couple of hours when, when you're still working on the on the basics, it looks horrible. Like the character looks horrible. Like I know that for a lot of you right now, it might be like, my God, this looks like not so cool. It doesn't look like a finished character at all, right? No, it's, it is not. And I, I'm totally aware of it, but it, it's the process. You, you need to go through this process. You need to clean your shapes. You need to clean your forms so that when you uh, finish and, and when things start getting like more and more polished, uh, everything just falls into, into place. So so this initial like plane building and, and proportion building is super super important for the for the generation of the of the whole thing. And I, I do think I, I have a couple of, like a, a small example um, here for you guys. Let me just 
finish a little bit here. That's a little bit of a mouth, just so that you guys know where the mouth should be. You're going to have to polish it, of course, if you want to convert this into a, like, into a different character. But uh, it should be a little bit easier to follow along. I'm going to give it a little bit more of a chin. Careful here. See how this is very round? That's usually not how it's supposed to be. I'm going to use my move brush. And I'm going to sharpen the jawline a little bit more. When you see it from the back, the jawline should be pushing a little bit. Let's keep adding volume where we need so that everything seems full and, and complete. But again, you're going to be changing and modifying a lot of these things. <laughs> Maybe this is a little bit too much. But see how it starts looking a little bit cartoonish due to the like sharp features that I'm using. And again, you are going to change this. This is going to be for you. And if you ever need to do like a male character, you can start with this one or with any of the other ones. And, uh, and use it for your own uh, for your own projects. Usually on the male character, you're going to have uh, the Adam's apple, the thyroid uh, bone. Is it a bone or a cartilage? Like right about there. There we go. Let's just clean it up a little bit more. Get rid of some of the... For instance, right here, we usually have like a, a couple of muscle pads right here. Very, very obvious. And then we have the, the chin. Smooth, 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 smooth to clean it up and just get like general shapes there. Over here, we usually have a, a big muscle as well, which is used for... Um, Biting, I believe it's called the masseteer muscle. Let's move that one out as well. And now again with my move brush, let's, there we go. I like that one a little bit better. Like flatten the face a little bit more on the side. I think he's a little bit too wide. So I'm just gonna push the whole head. Maybe give him a little bit more neck. Not bad, right? Not bad for, let's see how long we've been doing for. 22 minutes. Yeah, not bad for 22 minutes, I would say. It's a, it's a good start. And again, remember, this is not the, this wouldn't be the end of the character. Like, I would still need to push this and push this and push this until we have a very great um, element. So I'm going to save this for you guys. And I'm going to save it as a C tool. Um, let me save it on our assets. Create a new folder called Christmas Gifts or Christmas Week. There we go. And this is going to be face. Mail or just called Mail Face Base Mesh. Now, before we go, let me show you what I mean by uh, the process, right? Like, how are you going to be using this one for your own uh, work? So I, this is one of the exercises that I do with my students over here at the, at the universities that they attend. That's the end result, but let me see if I have, <sighs> let me see if the quick saves have, oh no, I deleted the quick saves not so long ago. So this is the end result. Uh, and you've probably seen this guy, we use this for the um, hard surface, um, armor part of the of the video of the course but we started in a very similar way like i taught those guys uh, my students over here let me see should be here or was it in cinematics mm, i can find it but yeah like you are going to start with something like very simple like this and little by little as you keep polishing and polishing you're going to be able to get to like a very very nice effect where it looks way way more realistic and it's all about polishing 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 but again maybe you're you're still struggling with the like the basic forms basic proportions then this is going to be a great starting place for you guys and if not let's say that you just want to practice seabrush and you want to do like even something crazy like uh let's say like a, like an orc right you can just grab this face right here and be like okay so orcs have like a really really massive jaw they're gonna have like a like a very intense effect over here they're gonna be angry okay so so feel free to grab this thing and change it and, and modify it as much as you want like if we were to add 
like some like tusks and horns over here. Okay. Why can I use my Did they change the snake hook? Oh yeah, it's now K. Huh, weird. Okay. So if we were to add like some tusks and stuff. Okay, see what I mean? Like by by having the the basic shapes here, it's very easy to create your own sort of uh sort of uh, character without having to start everything from scratch. So you can convert this into anything you want, okay? So yeah, that's it guys. Hopefully you like this uh, second uh, gift, second day of the week, second day of our Christmas special. Uh, tomorrow we're gonna jump into substance. We're gonna take a look at some small materials. I wanna show you how to create a small material and I'm gonna be giving you or uh, gifting you that uh, small material as well. Then on Thursday, we're gonna talk about Marmoset. I'm still not sure what to give you guys there because I'm, I'm thinking about like a, like a lighting scenario or something, but I'll, I'll take a look. Maybe some materials will be uh, cool as well. Let me know if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to, to do that as well. And then I did see some comments that you guys want something about Blender. Um, I'm going to check because I, I haven't been in contact with Alejandro in the last couple of days. So I'm going to check if he's available and he can do like a video for Friday. If not, I might do it myself and, and show you like a small technique that I've uh, found uh, relatively um, uh, like not, not so long ago. So yeah, that's it guys. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for being part of this community. Make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.